Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In the last part we went through Gyarados Fortress, getting some items in the process and then crossed the Honda Wasteland and now it's time for us to go into the Spirit Temple. Who the hell are you? I haven't seen you around, kid. What do you want? Uh, nothing, really. Just looking around. How are you? You have nothing to do? What good timing. Can you do me a favor, kid? Wait a second. I want to ask you first. You wouldn't happen to be one of Ganondorf's followers, would you? I hate that guy. Done nothing good for me ever. Uh huh. You've got guts. I think I like you. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm the Buru the, of the Gerudo. I'm a lone wolf thief. But don't get me wrong. Though we're both thieves, I'm completely different from Ganondorf. With his followers, he stole from women and children. And he even killed people! A kid like you may not know this, but the Gerudo race consists only of women. Only one man is born every hundred years. Even though our laws say that the lone male Gerudo must become king of the Gerudo, I'll never bow to such an evil man. By the way, what is your name, kid? Link? What kind of name is that? Well, anyway, I want to ask you a favor. Will you go through this tiny hole and get a treasure that's inside? <laughs> she said, uh, hmm. The treasure is the silver gauntlets. If you equip them, you can easily push and pull very heavy things. No, 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 kid. Don't even think about taking this treasure for yourself. The silver gauntlets won't fit a little kid like you if you try to equip them. I want you to be a good boy and give them to me. Ganondorf and his minions are using the spirit temple as a hideout. Only the silver gauntlets will allow me to sneak deep into the temple. Once there, I'm going to steal all the treasure inside and mess up their plans. How about it? Will you do it? Sure. Thanks, kid. You and I, let's give Ganondorf and his followers a big surprise, shall we? If you can successfully get the silver gauntlets, I'll do something great for you. Uh, okay then. So now we can crawl into the child cubby hole we saw as Adult Link and access the western half of the dungeon, so to speak. One thing I recommend, though, for the child Link sections of this dungeon is to switch over to the Hylian Shield, barring maybe one or two enemy encounters, as there's enough fire keys in here to worry about losing your Deku Shield. I did that in my practice playthrough, and losing your Deku Shield, especially in this room before we head into the next one, uh, that, that, that really sucks. Now, as you might be able to tell just based off the little cobra statues in the entrance I investigated the last part, the Spirit Temple is unique amongst any other dungeon in the game in that it's the only one you play as both young and adult Link in. Meaning they actually play the puzzles around your various mo uh, armaments, and it's really cool. This is my favorite dungeon in the game, honestly. With that said, it does also have a really annoying room super early on right here as you have to fight a Stalfos as Young Link. And the thing is about Young Link and Stalfos is that even if you use the Deku Sticks, very often Young Link just does not have the reach to deal with them as well as Adult Link does with or without the Bigoron Sword. The spin attack strategy still works, just nowhere near as much just because of how tiny the Ring of Energy is. This is also why I recommend you equip the Hylian Shield in the last room as if you lose your Deku, Deku Shield before this fight, uh, that sucks. I think it's possible to have the Stalfos fall off the legend here, and if you can do that, that is definitely preferable. You just need to figure out how the hell you're going to worm him into there. Without a doubt, this is the longest dungeon in the game, but thankfully, in terms of puzzles, while they're the most varied in this dungeon, they're still relatively simple. I think the Shadow Temple is a bit harder to figure out on the first playthrough just due to... Uh, the Lens of Truth and getting used to that. Don't get me wrong, there are some in here that are just like, what? But that's mostly for the Adult Link stuff. Also, we have to hit this switch with the boomerang, and I've always had trouble doing this directly. So what I tend to do is just take a void out and throw it in such a way that I can hit the switch while also voiding out. Unfortunately, that means you don't see the cutscene of the wire fence falling down, but oh no. A thing got affected by gravity. I can't believe you didn't get to see that. Ah! And that also means the cell phone does respawn, but uh, I can just leave the room. In this room, though, we have the first uh, appearance of a new enemy type. We're going to encounter what's known as an Anubis in here. 
And the Anubis are practically immortal. There is only one thing that can damage them, and that's fire. However, the thing about the Anubis is, is that they're also, this game's equivalent to the mimic enemies from the 2D games, namely A Link to the Past onwards, and that they mirror your movements. So what you want to do is go opposite of where the fire is, usually, and then kill them with it. Additionally, you can also just use Din's fire, and if you're Adult Link, you can just use fire arrows. But that said, uh, I'd rather just use the actual environmental hazard as I want to save my magic for the mini boss for reasons you'll see when the time comes. Oh boy, we got wall masters in here. Something I forget, honestly, is whether or not the wall masters in this room uh, are only on this half of the room. As you can enter this room from the southern half from the room where I killed all the enemies with the Armos Knight earlier, because it's it, this is just essentially just a giant circle. I just didn't, as I wanted to make sure I took care of everything else first. With that said, the reason we came around this loop the way we did was so we could come to this side of the fence and grab the silver rupees. What this is going to do is make the center of this fence drop down, and we can then light the torches across the way on fire, making a chest drop down. Also, don't make the rupee. I'm about to grab your last silver rupee, as there's a gold skull shell on the other side of the fence right now. And if you grab this as your last one, you fall down, and it can still hit you from the other side of the fence. Uh, whoops. Programming, what is it, right? Also, I think this room might have some of the most keys in it in the game, and I don't know why I find that so interesting. Mind you, I've always liked keys. I don't know why. Bats are annoying enemies, but at the same time, they're bats. They're adorable. They try to, like, hurt you majorly, and they just kind of bump into you, like, go away. Get out of here. This is my place. And also, we get the first of the few gold, gold sculptulas in this dungeon. As for the split up of gold sculptulas, three of them are in the child link section. The last two are in the adult link section. Come on. That's one of the few times where you can see the N64 controller really being the N64 controller with how stiff the game's controls can be. Now, something I'm not sure about, because I've never honestly tried, is to see what happens if you use, like, Din's fire on these torches and then leave the room. Uh, like, if you came south first, came from the south first, and then you wanted to head around to the north. I imagine either the chest despawns or it's just there for you waiting. Honestly, it's just not worth my experimentation, though. I got other things to do. And through this locked door, once we get some, I guess, needed ammo. I guess I can never have enough bombs. We find ourselves near one of the main rooms of the dungeon. I think this is the room I think it is, though. In that this is the first time the game even requires you to use bomb chew. We've been getting them for a while in-game. But this is the first room out of, like, three, if even, they're required. As there's going to be a rock that stands out on the rock wall up this climbing wall. And we need to take care of that. With that said, if you don't have bomb shoes, you don't need to fear, as there is a crystal switch high up in the room that if you hit with your slingshot causes some chests to drop down. I think one of them does have bomb shoes in it. With that said, not only are you going to want to take care of the Skullchilos first so that the bomb tree doesn't blow up on them, you're also going to want to wander around and take care of the Lizelfos that are around here as they'll just distract you otherwise, and that's just annoying, really. Also, we really have not seen Lizelfos in a while. Remember when they were kind of threatening just due to the damage they did relative to your health bar? Yeah, neither do I. They even seem like they have a lot less health now. But again, that's probably just because they're not jumping from platform to platform and getting out of my way so often. You'd be surprised what that can do to make a boss fight seem longer. I guess mini boss more than anything. Now the reason we need to blow up that rock is that as you can see, there is some sunlight peeking through it a little bit. This little sun switch on the ground will only activate if it gets touched by light. So from there, you can figure out what we have to do. And there's the bomb shoes, and actually, what is in this other chest? Is this just bombs, or what? Oh, no, it's a rupee. You know what, that might be a Deku shield. 
because uh, there are some times where the game gives you Deku Shields or items that you might need to replace in chests. But if you already have the item in your inventory, it usually just replaces it with a blue rupee, I believe. And bomb shoes, you just gotta make sure you aim right and time yourself a little right. I generally tend to stand around here and wait one or two blinks. Thankfully, most of the time, whenever they require you to use bomb shoes, in this game at least, uh, the obstacle you need to destroy with them, the moment the bomb shoe makes contact, it will explode. Whereas, one of the few things Majora's Mask does kind of annoyingly in my eyes, whenever you need to use bomb shoes for something in 100%, more often than not, you need to time your bomb shoe to blow up right on top of it rather than actually making contact with it. I'm specifically shouting out one section in the end game where you need to hit a bombable roof uh, that's way above you. And I think you need to wait two flashes, if anything, if I'm recalling the timing correctly. Somewhere about there. Now, the room I was just in is actually the central room for the temple, where there's a giant statue of the same statue that's on the outside of the Desert Colossus, the, the Snake Lady. And you can, I believe, grab the, dun the dungeon map here and now because of that. But I'm going to wait until the Adult Link section, because I just want to get back to that as soon as I can. Now, this room has multiple puzzles in it. We want to take care of not only all the, su the Beemos at first, but then what we want to do is grab all the silver rupees. What that's going to do is light up one of the torches, allowing us to light up all of the other torches. Why? Because I guess they decided they were running out of space and realized, let's just put three puzzles in the same room. I'm glad for the density, at least, because that means that they don't pad out the dungeon with extra rooms, but kind of stands out. <laughs> I believe getting all the torches lit up will drop a treasure chest somewhere in the room. But the thing we need to do to actually progress is drag these blocks in such a way that we can get that sun, uh, that sun switch lit up on that sunlight. The timing for getting all the torches lit up here is a bit precise, as you need to get a bit ballsy with rolling around and not waiting or not resetting your torch every time. As well, it just depends on where the blade traps are relative to you. It can take a couple laps. My record's five, but my average is about two for this. And with that, we're going to get a chest that has a small key in it. And now all we have to do is pull those blocks out of the way to get the sun into place. With that said, now is probably the best time to talk about this. Uh, I've mentioned before that in Ocarina of Time on the GameCube onwards, the symbol on all of the blocks in the game was changed to be the sigil of the Gerudo Pirates, from Majora's Mask. Whereas here, it's a, the symbol of the Gerudo, as well as on the box, is a crescent moon with a star in it, which not only incredibly is visually similar to the flag of the country of Turkey, but it's also from the flag of the Nation of Islam, the largest religion in the world, you know? And I guess at some point they realized, since Gerudo, uh, Ganondorf's a Gerudo, that means the Gerudo are in some regards the villains of Hyrule in this game, Having their symbol be very similar to a group that big, not exactly the best look for Nintendo. So they decided to fix it and be different from Majora's Mask onwards. And honestly, I think it's a good choice. I actually like the new design, the new logo better for the Gerudo anyway. It's the one that's stayed around ever since because it's even in Breath of the Wild. But that said, I do recall when I first saw that just being confused on what that was as growing up with the N64 release, that's not exactly what I was used to seeing. And now it's time for the mini-boss of the Spirit Temple. You're going to want to get not only out the Deku Sticks, but probably Nehru's Love as well. As the mini-boss hurts a lot. Time for a good old Zelda reference. This is the Iron Knuckle. These things are slow, they have a giant axe, and if that axe hits you, uh, that's probably about four hearts gone. These things hurt. With that said, they're very slow, so the main strategy comes down to get close to them, backflip away from their axe swing, then do a jump attack with Deku Sticks. If you get low on health or magic from using Nehru's Love, you can very easily just use the pillars around, as when the Iron Knuckle destroys those, they either drop some magic or health. This is the opportune time to use Nehru's Love, though, as it completely protects you from damage for a short time. 
uses a good amount of magic, but you can just spam it to death. As you can see, around a certain part of its HP, it loses some armor, it gets faster. It doesn't gain more damage against you, though. But in this phase, it's a lot easier to stun lock, as you can see, making this latter half of the fight much easier. Also, if you clip the camera into their helmet, which is pretty hard to do, I believe, without hacking, you can see that their skeletons are just based around Gerudo NPC characters, which is efficient use of resources, might I add. Hey, what's up, Link? Surprised to see me? A long time in this world is almost nothing to you, is it? How mysterious. Even I thought that the tales of a boy who could travel back and forth through time was merely a legend. Link, you have fully matured as an adult. From now on, the future of all people in Hyrule is on your shoulders. Maybe it's not my time anymore. Here's my last advice. Two witches inhabit this temple. In order to destroy them, turn their own magic power against them. Woohoo! Do you want to hear what I said again? No thanks. Been a while. I'll continue to watch you. Woohoo! Bye, Kepora Gabora. You'll only ever show up in the background of cutscenes now. And over here is a giant chest, and it's the very important one, as it's the one Naburu wanted us to find. In this chest is the dungeon item, the Silver Gauntlets. If you wore them, you would feel power in your arms, the power to lift big things with A. But these gauntlets won't fit a kid. Plus, we promised to give them to Naburu. We should keep our word. I like that we're honorable like that. What the hell? Hey, where are you taking me? Naburu? Yeah, let me go. Oh dear. You, you fiends. Ganondorf's minions. Link, get out of here now! These witches, they're using black magic on me! So I can keep the gauntlets! Yes, we can keep the gauntlets. With that, the Child Link section of the Spirit Temple is concluded. We can now just move on to Adult Link. So let's do just that warp over to the Temple of Time and jump cut to me traveling back here. This is notably the last time, if you've done everything I have, the last time you have to be Child Link in the game. So if there's anything else that I've done that you haven't as Child Link, including Skulltulas, getting into the seed upgrades, so on and so forth, this is your last opportunity to do so with the route I'm taking, at least. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 32, we're gonna be venturing through more or less the entire Adult Link section of the Spirit Temple, maybe barring the boss fight, if I'm recalling time correctly. See you guys, then.